Picture this, you're in a triathlon. Maybe it's your first triathlon, maybe it's your 50th triathlon, but you are going at a certain speed that feels very comfortable, very attainable, and is going to allow you to get onto the run feeling fresh. Now, picture yourself feeling that exact same way, putting out the exact same amount of effort on the bike, but going three miles per hour faster. In our experience, this is totally attainable because we find that a lot of athletes out there get into triathlon and sabotage their bike potential by making some really key mistakes that would allow them to go faster at the same effort level. These are small little changes to training, equipment, and approach to race strategy that can all make an enormous difference and barely take any more effort. What's up motivators? My name is Taryn. When ordinary people want to accomplish something extraordinary in endurance sports, they choose our totally free motive training plans. You're ready to take on that next big challenge? Let's do it. The first area where people can gain some speed is in their training. Now, this is going to take a little bit of effort, but this is the reality of triathlon. You can't really get something for nothing, unless we're talking about some of the changes that are about to come, but training is where you're going to make the biggest improvements. The thing is, with the same amount of time in training, but a little bit better structure, you will have an enormous difference in your race performance. What happens is that most people, when they're training for triathlon, without a coach or without a training plan, or maybe it is with a training plan that's just poorly designed, when people go out for rides, they just do rides. Maybe push a little bit, go a little longer. Maybe there's some intervals here or there, but the intervals tend to be fairly scattered. Then athletes get into a race and disaster happens. This can be avoided with two workouts per week. And we outline these two workouts in our very highly rated triathlon bike foundations book. The two workouts are simply one really long and easy workout. And this workout should build up to be longer than the distance of your race. Now it should be easy, very conversational pace, zone one or two. Should feel like you're just out for a fairly casual ride, but it needs to be long enough to build up the endurance to do well in the race and make that distance of the race a complete non-factor. So for a sprint, this means that you are building up to a 40 to 50 kilometer, roughly a 25 to 30 mile ride. For an Olympic, this means building up to a 60 to 70 kilometer, about a 36 to 42 mile ride. For a half Ironman, this means building up to 120 kilometer, roughly a 73 mile ride. And for an Ironman, building up to a 200 kilometer ride, but 120 miles. These over distance rides are going to make sure that you have all of the endurance to complete the race and then some. The one other workout that you should do every single week is a 30 to 60 minute hard workout. This should be really hard, featuring intervals of 15 seconds up to eight minutes. Now you can play around with the intervals or you can follow a structured training plan like the one we provide, where you build up sequentially from 15 second intervals to 30 to 45 second, 60 second, and then gradually building our way up all the way to eight minute intervals, reducing the amount of rest and reducing the intensity as you go. That's probably no additional time spent training, but it's going to be a much more effective amount of time spent training. The rest of these tips are going to be more free speed. The first one being helmet. This is an easy fix because everyone has to have a helmet and most people just get a very inexpensive road bike helmet when they just get started. Now this is fine. It's gonna keep your brains inside your head, but it's also not going to be very aerodynamic. Almost everyone will quickly buy a second helmet that is a little bit higher end, a little bit more lightweight, maybe a little bit more aerodynamic. Now I'm not going to try to sell you on buying a long tail, super fancy triathlon helmet because in our testing, what most triathletes should actually buy is an aero road helmet. We've done testing that showed that an aero road helmet can be used day to day when you're out riding on the roads in your group rides, but it's basically as fast as a triathlon helmet. And if you're buying that upgraded helmet anyway, why not just move over to an aero road helmet instead of a standard road helmet? What we've found is that this actually results in close to the same amount of speed improvements as buying a $2,000 set of aero wheels. Not bad for something that you were going to purchase anyway. The next little bit of free speed that you can gain is with bike position. There are a few common problems that we see in almost all triathletes. 
First, athletes who use a road bike and don't use aero bars are giving up a huge amount of speed. You should always use a set of aero bars whether you're using a road bike or a triathlon bike because 85% of the drag that we have to push through the air is actually caused by our body. The more aerodynamic we can make our body, the faster we're going to be at the same effort. Now, for the athletes that do have a road bike and aero bars, that position is a very difficult one to get right, and most often triathletes who have a road bike with aero bars get way too scrunched up with their hips really close. What they should be doing is moving their seat as far forward as possible to open up their hips, and then bringing the aero bars up as close to their upper body as possible so they can also be a little bit more upright and not into this tight, balled up position which compromises power. For the athletes out there who have a tri bike, most triathletes will start by creating a giant wind scoop at the front of their body with their body being above their hands and their hands being basically level. That 12 to 18 inches in between their forearms and their chin, that is just one giant wind scoop that is slowing you down. Conversely, a lot of triathletes are still of that old mindset where the lower the better, and they try to slam their aero bars as low as possible, getting under the wind. What's actually been found in wind tunnel testing is that the best aerodynamic position is one that opens up your hips nice and wide and doesn't have you leaning forward too much so you don't have pressure on your back and your hips are nice and open so that when you get onto the run, you're very fresh. You actually want to be fairly upright so that you can bring your hands up a little into a point in front of your chin, breaking the wind so that it goes around your body and being a nice and relaxed position on the upper back. The fourth thing that can make a massive improvement is nutrition. Very few triathletes that step up to Olympic distance races and longer have no nutrition strategy. Almost everyone goes into a race with some sort of an idea of what they should be doing for nutrition but very few people actually get it right. And the issue with this is that the bike is like a moving buffet. This is where the triathlon nutrition game will be either won or lost. Take in too much nutrition on the bike and you will probably barf on the run. Take in too little on the bike and you will have a brutal run without any energy. The thing is, you can't get it wrong on the bike and then make up for it on the run. You have to get it right on the bike. So most triathletes get it wrong, suffering on the run, and typically triathletes will start fading towards the final third of the bike when they get it wrong, making their bike even slower. We've done entire other videos on this that I'll link to at the end of the video, so I won't go too in depth in it, but you can go and use a calculator. There's a link in the description below to our website at mymotive.com for whatever race distance that you wanna do, and you will get the exact amount of calories that you should start working towards consuming on the entire triathlon, and this is going to be in the ballpark of a good nutrition strategy for you. The next thing that triathletes need to do is get their bike setup dialed in. A lot of people buy bikes worth thousands of dollars, then ruin all of the aerodynamics with $100 worth of water bottles, flat repair kits, and nutrition tape to their bike. At this point, you may as well buy a $1,000 aluminum frame road bike. It's very simple, and this is what we recommend every single triathlete do, is they have one water bottle that is mounted horizontally between their arms on their aero bars. If they're doing a half Ironman or an Ironman distance race, add on one or two water bottles at an angle off the back of the seat. And then finally, store the nutrition in a storage box that is on the top tube in behind the cockpit on your bike. And the very final thing is the key of all free speed. It is an efficient cycling technique. There are some really well-known professional triathletes out there who put out massive watts on the bike. But when you compare their actual speed to what their competitors are doing, they're not actually that much faster. When you watch these athletes ride, you will know why they are putting out more power but not going any faster. It's because they're riding hard and not smart and using way too much energy. The first culprit of this is rocking back and forth with the thought that you're really grinding it out and moving the bike around and putting out tons of power. And sure, you might be actually putting out tons of power, but it's dirty power. It's energy leaking into the sides of the bike and ruining the aerodynamics, as opposed to directly downwards into the pedals. So what you wanna work on is 
being steady on your bike and being very smooth. At every power level, smooth is fast. And how you can work on this is by riding with the sun in behind you, casting a shadow in front of you and looking down at that shadow, making sure that your body isn't moving around side to side and it's not adjusting, that you're learning just how to stay nice and steady on the bike. And the next way to gain efficiency with your cycling is to ride hills like a road cyclist, not like a triathlete. You see, most triathletes are afraid of power spikes and power valleys on the bike, wanting to keep a perfectly even pace. But this punishes the speed of athletes on uphills and really cooks us on the downhills because we have to work so hard without going much faster. Instead, we should push about 10 to 20% harder on the uphills and be willing to go about 50% easier on the downhills. You're going to have the same amount of average power over the course of a race, but you're going to be way faster than everyone who just held steady power because you're not going to lose nearly as much momentum on the uphill and you're really not going to go any slower on the downhill, but you'll be fresher and have that nice little break. Of course, being able to surge a little bit on the uphills means that you need to train for that before the race, and that's why all of our training plans have a lot of workouts with intervals above target race effort. You can get these training plans personalized for you entirely for free for any triathlon distance you want at mymotive.com. Now finally, if you want to dive into how to dial in your personalized nutrition strategy, click the video that I promise that is on the screen right now that explains exactly how to start customizing a nutrition strategy that's going to work for you based on your weight and your pace. It's going to get you the exact right amount of calories that you need in the exact amount of timing that you needed it. Later motivators.